Hello everyone, and welcome to Lori Rowe the Pro's YouTube channel. We're a real estate team that's been focused on the northwest suburbs of Chicago and Lake County for over 30 years. Today I'm going to talk about the options you have when selling your home in a divorce. And whether you're filing for divorce now or already in the middle of divorce proceedings, this video is for you. Then we'll talk about some of the things that make it more difficult to sell your home during a divorce. Finally, we'll talk about ways that you can still move forward to get the cash out of your home in a divorce. If you're going through a divorce, there's a lot on your mind. Selling your home during a divorce can add to the stress level. Real estate is often one of the primary focuses during the divorce and the determination of what you're going to do with this shared home. Complicating it, it may also have sentimental value to both spouses. Figuring out the division of the sales can be one of the more contentious things you have to deal with. In many cases, due to financial, legal, and other issues, it makes the most sense to sell your home. But even that comes with questions. So here are a few options to consider when you're selling your home in a divorce. The first option is just divide the assets. Sometimes couples have enough assets where one can keep the house and there's enough other assets where the other spouse would get the other assets that would equal about the value of that home. For example, maybe one gets to keep the primary house, the other gets to keep the vacation home or the stock portfolio. But there has to be a significant amount of assets in order for this option to be viable. A second option would be the buyout of the home. And in this situation, one of the spouses that will be determined will stay in the home and they will take assets that they receive and buy out the other spouse. Typically that buyout is about half of whatever the equity value is in the home. It could be more or less than half based on other things like income potential, previous agreements that have been uh, prenups and those types of things can have an impact. But basically, one spouse will buy out the other spouse's assets. And that equity value can be determined by understanding what the market price is, less whatever mortgage that you have on the home. The difference of that is the equity value. A third option could be co-ownership of the home. This is not what's typically done, but it is done from time to time. And in this situation, both spouses would continue to own the home. They would need to determine such things as who's gonna make the mortgage payments or how much is gonna come from each spouse who's gonna make the property tax payments and pay for the maintenance. Typically, what also is decided right up front is when the house will be sold. For example, when the kids are done with high school and what's gonna happen with the proceeds from the sale of that house. This isn't the most common thing we see, but we do see it from time to time. And we've even seen couples continue to share the house after a divorce with one living in one part of the house and another living in another. We've also seen scenarios where one of the spouses will live there for a few months of the year and then swap out with the other spouse who will live there a few months out of the year. Again, not one of the more common options here. The last and most common option is the sale of the home and splitting of the proceeds. Now there's a number of things that need to be considered if you're going to be selling your house during a divorce. The first is preparation for sale. There's a couple of components to that. The first component to that is getting a professional real estate appraisal so you know how much the house is probably worth. The second thing is to consider what you need to do to get the house ready to put on the market. This would be looking at things like maintenance items or any improvements or enhancements that you might be able to make to the property that could either make the sale go a lot faster or considerably increase the value that you might get upon sale. Now the thing that makes this tough in a divorce is it usually takes both spouses to sit down, agree on what should be done, who should do it, and who's gonna pay for it. Although it's tough, I highly recommend it because you might be leaving money on the table if you don't do it. So please try to get this done. It could be well worth your while. And as you prepare to put your house in the market, there's a number of other things you need to consider. Is one of the spouses going to be living in there during the sale process? And if so, who's going to pay for the expenses of the mortgage, the taxes, and the maintenance while that's going on? Who is going to be responsible for keeping it show ready so that it shows its best during the sales process? Now when you're ready to sell, it's important for both parties to work together to select a real estate agent. This is an important step in the process. It's way better if you can work together than let this get thrown back to lawyers and a judge to decide. Now, when you're in the selection process for an agent, there's a few things to consider. The first thing is the same whether you were in the middle of a divorce or not, and that's find an experienced agent. 
somebody who understands your community, your neighborhood, your price range. Make sure they know how to market the property appropriately. The next set of things I'll talk about are a little more unique to a divorce setting. First, it's important that you find an agent that you both feel is gonna to work to satisfy both of your objectives. Secondly, it's important that you find somebody that's a good communicator and if need be, be a mediator between the two of you. Now, in an ideal situation, an agent would be able to talk to you both on the phone at the same time and deliver any news related to the sales process that they need to. But in a lot of divorce situations, that's just not practical. So it's important to find an agent that would be willing to communicate with both parties throughout, effectively doubling their work. But it's critical you do that. Otherwise, as you move through the sales process, it'll create problems. And oftentimes, one of the spouses will feel they don't trust the agent, they don't trust the whole sales process, and they can blow up deals. Third, it's probably important that you don't pick an agent that has a relationship with just one of the two of you. It's fine to pick an agent that has a relationship with both of you, or to pick an agent that neither of you know after you go through a interviewing process. But it's probably best to avoid somebody that has a relationship with just one party. As I mentioned before, in those situations, it can create a scenario where one of the parties just doesn't trust the process, doesn't trust the agent, and can cause a lot of problems to try to get a deal done. Finally, it's important to pick an agent that's got high integrity. They need to make sure they do all the communications necessary, get both parties to agree on anything, get both parties to sign off before they accept an offer. You don't want anybody shortcutting the process and then having it blow up because it was shortcut. So again, that realtor selection process is a really important part of this whole thing. Let's talk about the process of getting an offer. Don't be surprised if the buyers don't submit offers that are exactly what the appraised value is. That's pretty normal in any situation. The key is how you manage that. This is where that relationship that I mentioned with the real estate agent and both spouses becomes very important. You should lean on your agent to determine if it's a fair price given the market conditions of the time. It's really important that that agent has been communicating with both of you so they can have a good open dialogue between the two of you to determine what offers you want to accept or what counters you want to make. Remember also that if you don't take the offer, it's going to extend things. And that extension of things could mean more money out of your pocket as you continue to make payments, mortgage payments, tax payments, maintenance upkeep on this home. It can also prolong the divorce scenario. As often one of the last things to be decided and divided up is the sale of the home. So you have to decide there's a trade-off there between a faster close potentially and taking a little bit less than maybe the house is appraised for to get it done reasonably quickly. You'll have to make that decision and it's a personal decision based on your needs and how tough the situation is. Now let's talk about dividing the profits. It's important to have a lawyer draw up a detailed contract that specifies how the proceeds from a sale are going to be split up, but also how any obligations are gonna be handled through the sales process. For example, you could end up with a surprise. An air conditioner could blow, a hot water heater could go out, how is that going to be handled in terms of who's going to pay for it? And how is that going to impact any distribution of profits? It's vitally important that you have a lawyer draw this up in great detail. It may seem very tedious and very long to come to this agreement, but it's vitally important that you do that. In conclusion, the divorce process can be difficult, but selling your home through a divorce doesn't have to add a lot of stress. The key is to find a good agent who communicates with both parties, looks out for both of your interests, and is of high integrity. It'll take away a lot of the stress of selling your home as part of this process. As an agent, we can support your needs through this difficult time. So please, comment, hit like, and subscribe if you found this content helpful. And if you have any additional questions or need help through this process, please give us a call. We service the northwest suburbs of Chicago and Lake County for over 35 years. We've helped many divorcing couples sell their shared home and help them find new homes to start the next chapter of their lives. We'd love to help you too. Thanks.